Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Lecture 4i of Useful Genetics, where we're extending our thinking about genetic interactions between different loci to thinking about interactions involving regulatory genes. And we're going to consider a simplified situation that exemplifies most of the key issues we need to think about. Um, genes that we're just going to call stop and go that control cell growth in embryonic and adult cells. We'll consider the effect of different kinds of mutations in both kinds of cells. So here's the genes we're thinking about. And as I said, they're just called stop and go. And we're considering these genes in normal cells but both in embryonic cells and in an adult cell. So in an embryonic cell, the stop gene is off, it's not expressed, and the go gene is active. The go gene produces a protein product that serves as a growth stimulating product for the cell. It may directly, directly stimulate cell growth. It may regulate other genes that stimulate cell growth. But basically, when the go gene is on, the cell gets the signal that this is the time to grow. And this is very typical of what you would expect in an embryonic cell. However, the same gene in an adult behaves differently because in the adult cells, the stop gene is active. And the stop gene produces a protein product that acts as a transcription factor regulating the GO gene. In particular, it turns the GO gene off. So the GO gene is not transcribed in adult cells. So indirectly, the stop gene tells adult cells, don't grow. Now we want to extend this to thinking about mutant cells. So Here's, again, our two cell types and our two genes. We can think about a single knockout mutation in one allele of the stop gene. What effect is it going to have in the embryo? Probably no effect at all, because our best guess is that it will be at least partially recessive. Now, let's consider cells with a single mutation in the stop gene. Now, in the embryo, it doesn't really matter what the state of the stop gene is because the stop gene is normally off in embryonic cells anyway, so it has no effect on phenotype. In the adult cells, there's still one functioning copy of the stop gene, and that's probably enough to turn the go gene off so the cell doesn't grow. So again, we don't really expect any phenotypic effects in of a single mutant allele. What about mutations in the GO gene? Well, again, in the embryo, the GO gene is on, but there's still one functional copy. So if we assume that loss of function mutations are recessive, the cell will grow normally. If it's not having not enough protein actually produces slightly slower growth, this cell might grow more slowly. In the adult, the GO gene is turned off by the stop gene. So the cell isn't going to grow anyway. It doesn't matter what the genotype of the GO gene is under conditions where that gene is not expressed. Now consider a different kind of mutation. Consider a mutation in the DNA sequence of the promoter for the gene that makes that promoter always active. These are not uncommon mutations in our cells. And What's going to be the phenotype of a mutation that makes the stop gene always active? Well, first, this means that the stop gene in an embryo is going to produce stop protein, which is going to act on the go gene. And probably, this will be enough stop protein to prevent synthesis of the go protein. So this cell, this embryonic cell, is not going to grow as it should. The stop gene has shut down its growth. This cell will probably die. It won't contribute to the adult phenotype. The same stop mutation in an adult cell isn't going to have any effect. The, oops, what happened to the back? 
the same stop mutation in an adult cell isn't going to have any effect because the adult cell is already making lots of stop protein. So a mutation that makes a stop pro promoter constitutively active will just cause what was already happening to happen. The GO gene won't be expressed and the cell will not grow. The phenotype will be normal. So what about a similar mutation in the promoter of the GO gene? Well, again, this mutation won't change the phenotype of the embryonic cells because the GO gene's already on. But it will change the phenotype of the adult cell because it will cause the GO gene to be expressed even though the stop protein is being made. That means that this cell is going to grow when it shouldn't. This is important because this phenotype is the phenotype of a cancer cell, cell in an adult growing when it shouldn't. Now, here's a slightly more complicated situation where we're going to consider both an inherited mutation and a somatic mutation. So again, we're back to considering a cell that has inherited a mutation that knocks out one allele of the stop gene. And as we said, this mutation is probably not going to have any direct effect on phenotype. But what if, during development, there is a second mutation in the other copy of the stop gene? Now this adult cell can't make the stop protein anymore, and so the GO gene is going to be expressed. And that means that this cell is going to grow when it shouldn't. That's the phenotype, again, of a cancer cell. So we saw two ways where a cancer cell behavior can arise, either by a mutation that turns on the GO gene or by two mutations that turn off the stop gene. And in particular, we considered the case where one of those two mutations was inherited but it didn't cause any harm because it's a recessive mutation. But that set up the situation where a second mutation in the other allele would create a cancer cell. We'll see how this plays out in the inheritance of cancer risk a couple of lectures from now. So here's another version of this question. What if there's an inherited loss of function mutation of one stop allele plus somatic loss of function mutation of the other stop allele in an adult cell. What's going to happen? And the answer is we're going to have a cancer cell. What about an inherited loss of function mutation in a GO gene? Will the same thing happen there? So as we said, in the embryo, growth may be reduced because we're not making as much GO protein as, pos as normal, or growth may be normal, depending on the details of how the GO protein acts. In the adult cell, the GO genes are off, so an inherited mutation isn't going to make a difference. What about the effect of a second mutation, another somatic mutation in the adult cell, knocking out the other GO gene? Nope, the cell's still not going to grow because the GO gene is off already. So we can think of this as a problem, inherited loss of function of a GO allele, and then somatic loss of function of the other GO allele what effect is this going to have on cell growth? It's not going to have any effect. Now, I've shown you very, this might seem a bit complex if you're not used to thinking about it, but in fact what I've shown you is extraordinarily simplified compared to the genetic interactions that happen in real cells. So this is a diagram 
showing what we know about the genetic interactions in the regulation of transcription in mouse embryonic stem cells. So these are very early embryo cells. And each circle is the name of a gene, and each arrow indicates that that gene stimulates the other gene. The um, green and yellow lines indicate interactions that are not stimulating transcription, but inhibiting transcription. And basically what you see is, oh my god, this is extremely complicated. Now, this is actually a relatively simple one. Here's a bit more complicated diagram. This is a signaling network that controls the production of new blood cells by bone marrow cells. And again, there's, oh, there must be 50 or 100 genes in here, all of which are interacting in their regulatory effects. And mutations in any of these will affect the phenotypes caused by alleles of other genes. So what we've done, we worked through uh, uh, quite a few examples of the effects of regulatory mutations in a very simple model system where we only had two regulatory genes. And we were able to predict cell behavior as a consequence of these regulatory mutations. And this has set the stage for what's coming up next, which is we're going to consider how somatic mutations cause cancer. I hope to see you there.